comments? Hi. Hello. Uh, what the final matter is part of your GIS work. Yes. And I just want Here's to say, you don't be oh, <laughs> uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, we're, we're just working on GIS and it got bigger and bigger and, you know, you want to do everything and I just want to say thank you because now you pulled it all together and, and you didn't say, well, don't worry, there's other people that are this, 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 you guys focus here and you brought it together and I just want to say, Mohamed, well, thank you so much. And for those of you who haven't had a chance to work with this group, um, dive in because you, whatever part that you can provide piece that you can help, I mean they integrate it on a larger level and they do it efficiently and I can't believe how fast. So um, you know it's like joining the joining the, the troops and thank you for making that work worthwhile to see John and the people that who helped us in the working group. Um, yeah. that was a good <coughs> experience for us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh the DHHL uh to take care of our people. And, uh, so they're doing a great job. We're going to help them out. Uh, there's been acquisition coming out with DHHL. I think in the final hour, you know, and that's ready to go uh, to handle some of the stuff that we was talking about earlier. But let me just talk about GIS for a second. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a GIS in the cloud. We're going to use the Vista contract, the Western <coughs> State Contracting Alliance, so we can get those services. Uh, we also want to take care of some local vendors. We can also bid for some other work, additional work. And so the Vista plus the other thing we can get some private cloud. But we're going to have a private cloud in Hawaii that allows us to have a secure cloud which can work. And then you can just get the service that you need. So you start with Paul Keone and you just work. Uh, one of the local vendors I should just say is are fantastic. Uh, I want to say my word, but I can't use the word again. Uh, so I'm learning. Uh, a kicking website, let's just put it that way. And you can do select provision manage right on the website and get cloud services. You want one terabyte storage or you want virtualization or you just do that, click, 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 you're done. Can you imagine what I just said? You don't have to go through 50,000 forms, 10 months of paperwork, and more hassle than you need to know, you know? And uh, some people rather go to the dentist than deal with that process, right? <laughs> uh, so you don't have to do that. And that service is what you provide, so you can do that. That's what I want. So anyone who can provide me that, provide the service, let's go. But cloud is, is something that also GIS, we're doing an acquisition in that sense that I'll get Okay, so there'll be a GIS in the cloud. Uh, so there's one infrastructure as a service, which is uh, storage and all that. There's also another private cloud, which is also storage virtualization hosting. And there's a third one, which is the GIS service itself. So something like, something like ArcGIS in the cloud, so you can get an app and a website. You'll be able to get geocode all the information and look at that right there provide geospatial as a service. So we're going to do that. That's like platform as a service. So that's coming as well. So we're very close to these. Just keep watching our website. From our website to the SPO website, all these things will come out and one by one. So some are some are smaller than others, but just keep focused on that. And, uh, and again, uh, we need more uh, for this Other questions? Come on back. If they raise a question, that means it's going to be a good one. <laughs> Mine's kind of a multi part question. Multi so part, oh. First, I just wanted to know for um, when you're doing issuing your RF oh, I'm Michelle. If you're um, issuing your RFPs, um, are you going to be issuing separate ones for like the vendor or entity that's going to provide the training to the state employees in addition to the technology? Or would you bundle it into a single RFP and say, okay, for the um, you know specifications, we need this software, this service provided, and then you know these this kind of training. Okay, great question. Oh, wow, that's a good one. Uh, answer is a little bit of both. We are uh, some of the larger programs. We have uh, this training within the RFP itself, so it's provided as a full package. So the assistant integrator or the team could provide that, give us this thing and also uh, give us the training. So we can do that. Uh, uh, we have just completed internally a uh, job skills assessment for our workforce as well. And uh, so training is going to be a big investment in our workforce because we believe in our people and we want to give them the training to make that happen. 
We're also just recently, if you go to the website, put in some smaller acquisitions, and I'm saying smaller means uh, you know, the tens of thousands or hundred thousand kind of thing. And uh, we are uh, putting something out for a training room in our uh, in, in Hawaii, and also uh, some training courses and so on and so forth. And uh, Deborah is here in the room, so Deborah, that's only out on the uh, SPL site. So Deborah Gagney is uh, is the uh, ICSD administrator, and she's also <laughs> and she's been helping me. Uh, she took pity on me and helped me out in uh, also the YMT office. And she's been doing a great job just helping us out with everything on training. And so uh, there's more emphasis on training, but you'll see both kind of contracts come out. One is uh, the, uh, just some stuff that we need to just have a training room. Because uh, let me just tell you what we're doing. We don't want people to go like onesie, twosie training to California, Seattle, whatever. We'll do some of that too. But what we're really interested in is them coming here to Hawaii, you know, the hard duty station. So, so they can come here to our training room and then we can educate more of our workforce so that they can see during a more session and make that happen, right? We can also do some webinar training as well. We want to do that to our training room. And thirdly, as I mentioned, some of the programs training will be included as part of the contract that you have to bid for. And uh, I think that's what it is. Deborah, did you want to add anything? Uh, no, we, we did the first set of training that we're in the process of now and then looking forward to more proposals in the point Okay. So we're spending, like I said, so we're talking a couple hundred thousand kind of things so far, and it's going to go up. It is, it's, it's going to go up in training. So I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Did you want to answer? Huh? So the other part, sorry. Oh, other part. Okay, so part two. <laughs> sorry. So, like, um, we, you know, there's kind of some issues with the state and how we um, have to balance. Um, you know, performance-based procurement and price-based procurement, you know, like, okay, lowest bidder, but then what about the services? So given the fact that a lot of these RFPs are multi-dimensional, you know, it's like you need good training, but you also need good technology. When you juxtapose the balance of performance-based procurement and price-based procurement with, you know, training implementation and technology implementation, like how will the state be able to reconcile, like I mean are there going to be sacrifices and okay well this is the best one out there for the best price but at the same time we, you know, they aren't as effective in implementing it through the personnel. So there are certain procurements, so first of all we have to go to the state procurement office for state funds currently and so we've been working so as you know on my website we reached an agreement with the state procurement officer and myself and it's on the website. We also laid out an acquisition plan as to the next generation of acquisition that we're going to transform. And so we're going to work towards that. But meanwhile, we've got to live with what we got right now. So there are two or three kinds of procurements. So one kind of procurement is it's low price, essentially. I think it's on HEPs. And it's, uh, is that correct? Deborah will tell me. She's been through 40 classes or 45 classes. So <laughs> she's certified or certifiable. I'm not sure what the joke is. <laughs> Uh, she's, uh, she's done a lot of stuff, she's very knowledgeable about this, but uh, so she has taught me a lot of counseling on this, uh, and I need a lot of counseling, by the way. Uh, but part of that is some of those procurements are very clear, uh, low price wins. A lot of stuff that we want to do is best value. Uh, we want to get something where you provide services that allow us to uh, get the benefit of uh, things that overall the total cost of ownership is lower, but to provide us some service. Because we want to train our people. At the end of the day, we want the people to own the system, and it's their system, right? It's not the executive in charge, it's their system. I want the five payroll ladies who handle payroll and DAGs, I want them to own the payroll module. But they're heroes, they really are. They somehow get this thing going. And that's what I said. I mean, they are the moms and grandmas, and they've been doing this for 30, 40 years. They're the ones who own that module, and they want to get the training. And they want to get trained for the new system. So they want to be in the new one, right? So I just think, it's going to be a little bit of that. But it'll be very clear on what we announce, whether it's low cost or best. Having said that, it's always good to give us a little comment and discount on our focus. So please do our best. Yeah, yeah the, we're currently working with SPO to come up with a, um, a format for a lot of these RFPs and RFIs that is more business language oriented and less commodity like oriented. And that helps to really align the, the purchase. Write a better RFP, you get a better answer. You know, better the question, the better the answer. <clears throat> and so, if we get this up in this new format um, and start pushing those through, as people they're used to seeing it, they um, 
they know that they can align the technology with the business need, and then that will kind of take care of itself. I'll just say one thing. We're also going to be announcing very soon that we're putting a lot of these on a price list for our IDIQ contracts. So once you're qualified for that, once you're in, when the task orders come out, uh, you just pay for a small task, it's much faster and away you go. That's what we're going to do. We want everyone, we want to level the playing field so that everyone comes on board and has a chance. Whoever wants to help the way out, is welcome. That's, that's our strategy. And so a lot of these will be coming up. Right now, first, with the HCF funding, I have to go a little bit more through the RCUA process. We put it out there, whoever wants to bid can do it. So some, sometimes we don't get all the best you know, uh, competition there. Uh, the SPO is very good on equity process, putting it out there, everyone can bid a very select, straight process. Going forward, we want to do more of these enterprise contracts so that everyone's there. I like to get more enterprise license agreements. And I like to get something on training. So if there's a bunch of training vendors that come in there, hey, come on in. And if you want to team up with some uh, providers, you can also go the other way and, and provide that. Okay. Yes, question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Miami Sandy. I'm just following the remarks to your redundancy for disaster recovery. Are you looking at satellite? I think we we talked about it, you know, but uh, we haven't really gotten gone deep into the weeds on that on using satellite as a backup right now. I think the the order of magnitude of what we're talking about to get the ISPs and anything else is uh, we're going to get to higher performance computing and go to the higher performance uh, transmittal. So I think that's one. Hopefully the buyers were wrong on that the sun flare thing coming. Uh, so, uh, uh, so that's, you know, but I think SATCOM does play a role for certain uh, required backup, maybe. Uh, my only challenge is I don't want that you invoke that after the thing happens and you only get like 40 megabits, you know, 50, 20, 50 megabits kind of thing. I would rather have something sustained that's used, uh, so that's used as a normal force of bandwidth, otherwise you know, it's a waste. So I, I just feel like that's the, I'm sorry, I'm an engineer by training, so uh, those kind of what we call TDMA and DAMA systems and new kind of processes, you know, we want something that's dynamic and keeps using it, and it's only used for the, just in case, you know, but it's used for the larger things will still be fiber and, uh, you know, trans-specific fiber is what we're thinking. We're going to go with much higher capacity. Yes, sir. No problem. I'm going to talk about the white home lab. I work with the pistol ops, and I want to find out what is the uh, current status of the program to allow the departments to file, you know, the treasury deposits electronically. Because you know, currently we gotta print it out on this laser form, make full copies, and send it to PNF along with the company. And they walk. They walk in. <laughs> They said the last digital upload, but the last digital upload, someone actually walks in. <laughs> I was stunned by that. You know, so uh, the answer is there's an ETDR project that is almost done, working with BNF and DAGS. And uh, the, the program manager in charge of that is Kim Hutzinger. She's out, unfortunately out today. But uh, we're very close to making that happen. Uh, also, there's uh, couple of vendors in the room who you know, we can talk about how we make that final transaction happen. Uh, but we are almost there. Great. And in a few weeks, uh, hopefully, there will be an announcement as to what we have completed there. And if that happens, that will be the first thing. But I will, I will withhold it so that we can have something nice to announce in January. In January. Right. So, uh, but yes, we are very, very pretty close to that. And we're working actively. But see, that's the other example of partnership between BNF, DAGs, OIMT, and then uh, external. But that's also an example of business process of engineering. So that is the job ready model. So that tax example where you have know, a 300% improvement and they did it in four months and your tax returns came up faster, you also collected faster. Uh, 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 it's all good, hey, don't give them a take. But, uh, but my point is, they did it. The government workforce did it. And they were turned in for an award. <coughs> One of the best in the country, no one else has come with I send that note to White House and blown away by what we, what we showed. And the only reason I'm doing this is to just show that, you know, we don't take away seriously, yeah? we're not just, uh, you know, we, we can do it. 
And, and so but these processes, these small little, not Bonini, but they're important processes. See, I learned the word. And, 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 and we just keep using that, and now you can make it happen. So this is another three, four month project up and running. You'll see a lot more like that coming up. Thank you very much. This side of the house is very quiet. No question on this side. There's only one. Um, you know, when you look at some of these lines of movements, you talk about unified communications and uh, digital transmission of data and whatnot. It seems to me that one of the key things that seems to be missing, uh, maybe it's already been talked about, like the digital identity, digital uh, authentication, signage on forms and whatnot. So is there going to be some kind of integration of, of uh, digital IDs and whatnot, not just for state employees and whatnot, but also for yeah, so wow, great because, question. Because that, that is tied into like, how are you going to transfer stuff digitally? It has to be signed, it has to be you know, and all that stuff. So yes. you have to do that kind of thing in order to get into that digital world. So this one badge from a department that should go in there. It's a dumb badge. It's just like a picture on it, it kind of looks official, it's going to wave like that. Someone said, okay, go on in. <laughs> I won't trust that guy on this picture. But this is a badge, but nothing on it. No intelligence, no chip, no barcode, no nothing. This is another accent. So, and even the state ID, although they've made it online, does not have intelligence on it. So, what we're trying to do is have a project called Identity and Credential Access Management, where we want to do two things. One is for state employees and government employees, we'll have two factor authentication, the intelligence tied to the directory structure, so that then we can put your single sign on or road based access control with a PIN. And you can invoke the public key infrastructure and encryption right from the start. And your role based access control will go straight from your directory structure so that you can see what it is. That's one of Keone's projects as well. So, my acting chief information security officer will be reporting to Keone to make sure that does. We want to do a pilot to show that it works. Now, I came from the other world where that was exactly what you did. We always did our, you know, either from the keyboard or whatever device, that was encrypted at source and only based on your role. It should roll with you anywhere. I got it. And all I need to remember was my pin and some secret questions. And away you go. You know what I'm saying? And it's biometric and all that kind of stuff. Alternatively, we also need for the state employee, for everyone in the state, citizens, they need to come to myhawaii.gov, right? How will they interact with their business? We only want them to see their their stuff, their education data, their health data, and all of that. So we need this intelligent state ID with that same kind of feature, which allows them to do it, and then they can get all the service. So that, you're exactly right, that is the key. And that is the key to the kingdom. That one is got some heavy security implications, so we're looking into that. We have talked to some of the agencies who are way ahead of us, uh, bring that in. City and county have also got some good stuff that we want to look at. So we're going to do this pilot, and we're going to demonstrate that to the legislature during the session. And then we're asking for some more money get it to the next level going forward. So great question. This is the answer to the movie. And if you do this, and even if you lose it, see some people say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, if you lose it, hey. I was like, yeah, but now I don't. <laughs> I know who lost it and what it is, and I can do a countermeasure. That's the whole point. And then you'll be able to customize my way back up to what you want to see. If someone wants to see education, health, tax, and maybe your tickets. But by the way, you know the most efficient people in the state government, or in the world actually, and I think we're number one in this area, are the ticket givers. <laughs> I can tell you by far, industry does not stand a chance against these guys. These guys are the most effective and efficient. You park in one of those buildings, and if you park in the wrong spot, they'll give you a parking ticket. Right? They're very effective and efficient, right? So, hey, I'm sorry, I, I digress. Uh, <laughs> I'm really impressed by that. So I always watch out for them where they are. But, all of that stuff, we don't know where they are. We don't know what's going on. I mean, we have to provide services that allow people to get that information and you can get anything that you want. So identity, credential access management is going to be a big, big deal for us. So, uh, and, and then, how many of you want to remember 50 passwords? Just remember one. And you have your system and it's very clear. For what you do. It'll take some time to do that, but that's what the feds are doing. That's what we want. Question.
Okay, so you? Yeah, he's the HDI program manager right here. Yeah, LTE is going to play a critical role because the, the first net is would be being based on for, uh, LTE technology and has the most uh, RF pervasiveness on the island that we can establish, especially for the licensed fan to Verizon user. Um, so we have most uh, coverage, most uh, you know, penetration of that signal. We can put them out the green, you know, radio sites and things like that for, for back calls. So uh, LTE is, is becoming a big player in the technology that's going to be rolled out. It's great on the Yes, yes. Yeah, we're trying to get to a standard where I can also do secure Wi-Fi and other technologies and other kinds of mobile availability as a service, uh, if you can do that. Uh, I will say that we've got more vendors to participate. We obviously appreciate the rise in the signals and everything else. One feedback is kind of interesting. Yesterday I was in the, the legislature, I mean, I'm talking about. In one, of the, one, in one of the floors, Verizon has a beautiful signal, and ATT has got a lousy signal. And the other floor, ATT has got a great signal, and Verizon has a lousy signal. Can I talk to you about that? <laughs> <laughs> if the center is happy, then my funding is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my point is, but we, my point is, we need the signal so that it just works. It's back to the infrastructure. It just works. And if it works, it what's happening. That's all we need, right? And we need people to come in and engage. We also want to be providing all the services online so they can interact from anywhere and interact with their government. You own the government. We are here to serve you. And I think that's the whole point of it, which is why they shouldn't be focusing less on infrastructure and focusing more on serving, serving you. Okay, now this one has three questions, and you've got, a, you've got two over here, so they're in the lead. Any last question? We've got about four more minutes. Yes, I'm Recently, um, State ID was talking, has been taken offline, so everybody has to go in. <coughs> is there an attempt to bring that back online? Because I get that question every day. People complain to me that State ID can no longer be online. Yeah, so the answer is yes, I want to bring it back online. I've worked up with the governor, and uh, I've talked to some of the other department heads to see how that happens. But uh, it's, a, it's a very strange kind of thing. I know Russell's in here. So there's just a bit of politics, but well, politics in a way. <laughs> so just working through some of that. But uh, yes, I, I think it'd be crazy not to do it. And, and, yes. and clearly, you, could, uh, you know, do things online. I'll just say one thing is that uh, uh, you know, AG's office did a good job. DOT is doing a good job. City and County is doing a good job. So we're going to work with everybody concerned. But I'm really interested in also that state ID smarter a little bit, so what I gotta sell that first, things first, let's get the state ID still online and someone providing it. And second, let's look at a longer term about getting the identity and potential access management. If I get that, plus the state ID badge, I'll put it. Leanne! Hey Sunny. Um, so for your information, and Russell knows this too, state ID, the legislature transferred state ID to the Department of Transportation. So now it's gonna be issued as a non-driver's license ID card. So you've got to kind of figure that out in terms of driver's license and non-driver ID, which is the way it's issued in 49 other states in the nation. So Hawaii finally is going to be um, uh, issuing it uh, like everybody else does. Okay, so going forward, you just need to figure that out. So it's not that the state ID just automatically um, cut it off. It was because it was, it's going to be transferred to DOT from January 1. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, that's what I meant. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and they're doing a good job. But all I'm saying is, right now, we're going to take it. So that's what I'm saying. Okay, one more question. Good one, and then Justin, give me the eye. Just trying to keep everybody on time. So, lunch is waiting for you now. He thought I was a CIO. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more question. Come on, one last question. Who's going to win the national championship? Oh, sorry. Hi. Um, my name is Vince Fong from Hawaii You mentioned that you talk, we're planning on having five data centers in this state. So do you have any metrics on what percentage of that data you're going to be, um, that you, that's going to be housed in those facilities will be backed up off, out of state for really big disasters? Well, the good news is this gentleman right here, David Keene, who is the CIO for DHERD, 
has uh, decided to help us out and he's been great in helping with the data center project. He's running a laboratory program to actually complete this study. We're also triangulating with some other US government agencies to, to get that study. That study will be coming out at the end of February or so. When that study comes out, you'll have all those answers to your questions that you're asking for. And with that, you'll be able to then provide that as a service. And then by policy, I'm going to ask all the departments to start putting their stuff on all the multi-tenancy into this data center so that we have guarantees of how we use those, that data. We'll also look at what you're talking about there is what's going to go off island to stay on island. And all of those things will be worked out. But I first got to get everyone together and, and uh, you know, uh, sort of work together. So that's, but the data center study is coming out and we have a lot of good stuff. In we also want to look at the energy grid, let's be honest. Energy is very expensive here. So how can we improve the sustainability and all that stuff? By the way, did anyone notice that sustainability has the word Aina in there? I don't know why I noticed it. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, we are going to have to take energy free as well as survive uh, because uh, survivability is really, really important and affordability. So we look at all those things. But David Keene right here, who is why I'm sure from the second year. Well, thank you very much for coming and enjoy lunch and uh, we've got a great session in the afternoon and great people. Thank you. Thank you.